morning, good morning. Welcome back. Another video. Today, back at our friends over at Shine Supply. I've had the truck for a few days, um, getting it all torn down and built back up essentially. So the whole truck is gonna be is ceramic treated. I'll let Jeremy, the owner, dive into uh, all that was done and how they do it. Um, but that camper looks familiar. That's because it was mine. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's dive into some shine supply action, shall we? All right, guys, we are here. Actually, this is the first time I've been in the shop uh, at Shine Supply. I've always peeked my head in, but I'm here with the owner, Jeremy. Um, and today we're kind of going to go into not only just the truck that you guys just finished. Like, the, they did my Raptor, but um, I definitely need to get the Ram done. But what I first want to start off on is let's give a brief summary as to how you started this company, where you started from, what got you to this point, um, and stuff like that. So, Jeremy. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, everybody? As Travis said, I'm Jeremy Stevens. I own Stevens Detailing and Shine Supply. I started Stevens Detailing in 96. So I was six years old. <laughs> yeah, so next year I'm celebrating 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, started off mobile detailing right here in Ventura. Did that for 18 years. And in 2008, I started Shine Supply, which is my product line. So about six years into that, I moved into a shop because we started shipping more products. We were shipping out of the garage at first mm -hmm. and started shipping more products. I was like, man, I need a space. So we moved in the shop in 2014, got away from the mobile part mm -hmm. um, and blew up. <laughs> yeah. It's so so if you guys haven't been here before, obviously I encourage you to come pay a visit, but literally this whole compound is theirs, whether it's shipping and receiving, getting products bottled, Everything is done here in house, and it's honestly a big family environment, which is really what drew me to this place. Is you have your family working here, heavily involved in the business, teaching your your your, your boys how to effectively not just be um, good citizens and good human beings, but also how to effectively run a good business, um, and keeping that very close to heart. And that I think is something that is very rare in these days. Um, so when we go into Shine Supply products. What is, what's your goal with it in this space that, you know, a lot of people don't, they think about their paint, they'll go get it wrapped, they'll go get it, get the PPF stuff, but what a lot of people don't know is even when they buy a brand new vehicle, there's some severe imperfections in the paint that could lead to problems down the road, correct? Mm -hmm. And what are those, so what do you guys, essentially, what do your products help do for those who want to first get introduced to your products before they go to the ceramic type detail? What do your products help do that separates you guys from the rest of them? Yeah, well, kind of a loaded question, but yeah. we'll try to simplify <laughs> it. So, um, if I could summarize my main focus of, of developing a product line, number one, it came out of my love for detailing. Mm -hmm. I love detailing. Anything you love, you want to share with other people. Mm -hmm. So, what a better way than to have your own product line so you can put your flavor on things and um, but what makes it unique is that I really got close with the lead chemist that used to be at our current blending company and educated myself on how products work as far as, um, you know, the kind of the back end of it, which really helped me become a better detailer. So um, the, if I had a main focus of Shine Supply, it would really be to educate people to take better care of their vehicle. I mean, there's great products all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, if we were... If we were going to ignore that, we'd be lying. You know, it's not about our stuff is the best or there's nothing better. I, that philosophy, I, I, I'm personally not a fan of that. I'm more, more or less my approach is, hey, you know what? If I can win on an educational level, if I can help you take better care of your truck with quality products, I believe you'll keep coming back. So I also feel like we're in a day and age where customer service is a lost art. 100%. Like it's, it's, there's such a race to the bottom, like who can make the most, the fastest, ours is the best, putting stuff on sale all the time. 
And not knocking that, everybody's got to do what they do. Yep. That's not what we do here. Yeah. You know, my focus here is, once again, educating, provide a quality product, but support it. And that's why we're big on doing the Instagram stories, um, doing stuff like this, still being an active detailer so that we can actually show results with our product. I believe um, actions speak louder than words, that old statement that we've all heard most of our lives. Yeah. Um, it's truer than ever nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. We want, to be, we want to do what we say and let the results speak for itself. Absolutely. Now, on the education, that's a huge part, I think, is, you know, a lot of times we'll just read the instructions on the back and kind of sometimes they're blank because they have yeah. such a little area to do it. Yeah. But also having the proper customer support that when you call a place, you're going to get connected with someone who can actually tell you how to properly use the product. Yes. There, you guys do have a large variety of products, but they're all very specific in how they can treat uh, the vehicle in a specific way. And whenever I had a question, I would always reach out, whether that's through Instagram or I'll call, and there's always someone who's going to help, whether uh, that's you yourself, or your son Colby, or any one of your staff, they're all very uh, knowledgeable. And speaking about education, you guys also do training for those who want to get into this industry space, that have a love for vehicles, whether it's cars, trucks, RVs, boats, motorcycles, whatever. Um, you guys provide a service where you can educate uh, them how to properly maintain a client's vehicle too. Yeah. Okay. And what's and how and how long is that course essentially? Do people, do people go out and that's their full time gig after? Or? Um, so we have a three day course mm -hmm. that uh, we run eight classes typically a year. I believe this year we did ten classes. Okay. Our demand increased. We actually have a waiting list for twenty twenty one. So added two classes. Awesome. Um, I believe the pandemic kind of fueled some guys. You know, maybe transitioning in jobs and wanting to get into detailing. So our three day class is very involved. It's really from A to Z as far as like. If you knew nothing about a detailing business, you could literally come to our class and potentially leave here if you're willing to put in the work and run a business. Yeah. I teach everything from getting the business licenses to sanding out of scratch. So that's our three-day advanced course. I just added another course. Um, it's a one-day class, mm -hmm. and it's going to be going over our do-it-yourself paint correction kit that we saw on the website. So it's just one day specifically focused. For guys or gals that want to take better care of their vehicles on their own, we go over our do-it-yourself paint correction kit. Uh, we do a full walkthrough on how to prep a car, how to get it prepared for protection, which is the most important thing in our current world of ceramic coating buzz. Prep is what matters most. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, what so yeah. that, that class, just to wrap it up, that class is a one day that's just gonna dive into that. And we're excited to launch that because we've had a lot of people that don't necessarily wanna take the three day class. That's like, hey, I'm not trying to start a business. I just wanna take, I wanna be able to polish my truck myself. So we're willing to teach that in that one day. So. Yeah, that's unreal. That's yeah. that's something I'm definitely gonna have to uh, dive into. Yeah, and then Travis that's... will never come back here. No, 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 no. I'll definitely have to come back, back here. Hey, but you know what, if you don't, honestly, it's okay. Like, we're not trying to grab everything. It's yeah. like. I believe, you know, when you help, it all just comes back around. So. 100%. Yeah. And that's definitely one of the cool things about the, one of the kits you offer is the beadlock kit, which is your ceramic yeah. kit. Comes in a cool little, it's all, it kind of reminds me of like the old school cookie containers yeah. that you had to pop open as a kid. Totally. Well, you uh, know what, just comment on that, I interrupt you. <laughs> no, you're good. Remember, I don't know if you grew up like this, but my dad had Folgers coffee cans yeah. in the garage. Yeah. It, it just, it takes me back to a lot of good memories. And I think a lot of people can share that. So that was my effort to preserve that. Is that oh, really? Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> put some nuts and bolts in the yeah. garage. You know, these are things that used to happen that we're getting away from because everything's turned into a disposable society. Yeah. And it's making our character kind of like that. Yeah. As people, yeah, like absolutely. treating everything as like, whatever, I'll get another customer. Whatever, I'll go buy products somewhere else. I don't believe in that. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. that's what that's yeah, we want to keep stuff. So. Yeah. And uh, the beadlock kit. I remember on my Raptor that you guys did. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my own wheels. Though, yeah, the instructions are fantastic. <laughs> it's also something that people are still kind of with that one day class would definitely yeah. be a huge help. Is there's still a nervousness to, to it and a, an apprehension that maybe you didn't do that right. But with that class, it definitely can bring things full circle and people have confidence in what they're doing. Because just like you said, society's kind of become a disposable type of environment. Whereas this, a lot of people don't look at vehicles as an investment. Yeah. And it is an investment. Yeah. I mean, we're talking trucks that used to be 50, 
40, 40 fifty thousand yeah. dollars. We're talking yeah. eighty, ninety thousand dollars now. That's a big chunk of change. And so understanding that keeping and maintaining not just the paint but the rest obviously of the vehicle is still an investment when you go to sell or get rid of it, that your money is going to come back. Yeah. So all right, well let's dive into what we did on this thing. Uh, mind you, I cleaned this. This thing has been on the road for the past since I bought it. Bought it, went straight to uh, Washington, then went to Utah and Colorado. So it was hammered by a ton of different environments. And I wash it, using, utilizing the products. But like we said at the beginning of the video, there's imperfections in the paint that no matter what I do, I'm probably not going to get rid of it. And I'm going to continue to have little flaws along the way. Um, so let's first start off on how bad was this paint and how do you get it to where you're ready to then start applying the ceramic portion of it or polishing. I, I guess we could break down the steps of it. Yeah, so let me take a couple steps step back yeah. to your comments on B-Lock. Um, our industry has kind of presented coating as this like uh, intimidating, don't try it unless you're professional. And I'm not saying there's not a technical aspect to applying it, because there is. Yeah. There is technique, but really where the skill set lies is in the prep. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by prep is decontaminating the paint, you know, getting it smooth so there's no bonded contaminants. You know, after you wash a vehicle and you still feel like a rough feel, like how do you get it smooth? You want to start with a smooth surface. And then the real technical aspect is polishing out defects safely. Mm -hmm. You know, for years, detailing consisted of somebody just grabbing a buffer, you know, a car lot or a body shop and just running a buffer over it and all they're doing is taking life off of your paint. Mm -hmm. And so how do you still remove defects but do it safely? Mm -hmm. And that's really why I'm starting that one day class because it, it's not that coating is the difficult aspect, it's, it's the prep that's the difficult aspect and then coating is like the icing on the cake. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of bust through that barrier of like ceramic coating being this um, untouchable thing, and that was our goal with Beadlock. You yeah. know, it's, it's so it's really on the proper prep. So that said, let's go over, you know, how how you how do you prepare a vehicle properly to put coating on or even wax or a traditional paint seal. So, as you guys know, this is Travis's new Ram. It's beautiful. It's got some nice innovates on it. This came in. What is it? Six months old? No, a month old. <laughs> it looked like it was two years old. <laughs> <laughs> so it came in. Already had some pretty significant defects in the paint. A lot of those you cannot see till you get it under proper lighting, which in here we have some LED lighting. Um, so what we did, this is what we call at Stevens Detailing a new vehicle protection detail. And so what we do, step one is decontaminate the paint. So that means a proper wash. And then to just comment on what I said a minute ago, even after a wash, you still will have that rough feel sometimes, you know, typically on the tops of the vehicle, on the back tailgate. That is what is called industrial fallout. That's kind of the formal word. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with a bunch of details on that. All you need to know is that nasty, gritty feel after you wash that is no one likes. Yeah. So how do we get that off? We use a product called Smooth Move. It's a paint decontaminator. We use it during our wash process. I have a video actually on my Instagram, a highlight on that process. It basically, no other word really to say, it exfoliates off those bonding contaminants. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a liquid clay bar, if that kind of helps okay. some of the listeners, yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah, a real yeah. basic. A liquid clay bar, if you just picture something doing with clay dust, but in a liquid form. So it's getting off a lot of those embedded contaminants. So then when we dry the truck and go to do our clay bar, it's already done a bulk of the work for us. That's moving the product. Makes sense? Makes sense. And it's also getting off some of the embedded contaminants that clay typically won't get off. Okay. Okay? Because any contaminants that you try to put protection over, you're losing bonding mm -hmm. from your protection. Okay? So, secondly, we're going to pull it inside, evaluate the paint. We are going to look at the defects and we're going to make an assessment. Which compound are we going to select? Are we going to select a polish? you know, a little less abrasive, so we're gonna make that decision. We're gonna use a microfiber pad, a cutting microfiber, a finishing microfiber. So we're gonna start on a test area, we're gonna make that assessment. Um, these are things that I believe make us, I don't wanna use the word different, because there's, there's a lot of good details yeah. out there. There is, um, but there's a lot that 
are not educated and it, and or maybe probably wanted to cut, you know, maybe wanted to cut corners, you know, stuff like that. So I don't ever want to seem like we're putting other companies down. So I want to be careful when I say this is our approach, yeah. you know. But it's I won't say that every detail you go to is going to have that approach. Yeah. Because we're very well aware that a lot of people out there will see what they can get away with rather than what they can do right. Well, you think would that you, would you I, would, I would agree with that. <laughs> I think that also falls down on why it's important that your one-day class, so even on the customer aspect, they understand what they're getting out yeah. of the product or the services yeah. being provided. And that's where I think the downfall in a lot of industries is, is that a lot of times the customer doesn't really know what they're getting. Yeah. They just know they're getting it based on whether someone referred them there, mm -hmm. or they see a hype around it, or that's the next cool thing. And they just get it just to get it. But the reality is, is especially now during the, I mean, why I was going on right now, we want to make sure wherever our money is going, it's being Straight invested up. in for yeah, profit. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, it, and I think that's one thing that brought you here. Absolutely. Is, you, is me giving a window into, oh my gosh, that's what goes into that? Mm -hmm. I mean, because what's a typical thing you're going to hear? It's a new truck. Why are you doing that? Right? Oh, so instead of us bashing that mentality, you know, and being like, oh, you're an idiot. You don't even know. It's yeah. like, no, people don't legitimately don't know. And they're speaking out of that not knowing. Yeah. So we're like, uh, actually, here's a new truck. This is what it looks like when we're starting with under lights. And then it's like, oh my gosh, that's a whole different story now. Oh, yeah. So our agenda here with your truck and any other vehicle that comes here is let's get this surface right so that you have a good canvas, so to speak, to work with moving forward. Yeah, perfectly. I don't want you to have to continually to come back here. That yeah. might sound like a, a contradiction. I'm gonna keep coming back here though. As somebody right. that's running a business, like wait, I don't want more business. That's not what I'm saying. It's that I want you to be able to leave here, enjoy taking care of this, and if down the road you happen to be like, you know what, I wanna go back, see Jeremy, get a little refresher, Cody maintenance, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I really want you to enjoy the condition. Basically, we brought your truck to like a level 10, so to speak, yep. right? And and you keep it that way. And if you fall off a little bit, you come back here and we help get you back to that point. But man, for 20 years, you know, or even longer, detailing really consists of, you buff the car out, it looks good, you wash it a few times, it's already back to how it was, mm -hmm. right? It's 100%. like, and then you're looking at these hundreds of dollars like, okay, that was cool, I enjoyed that for a couple weeks. Yeah. Where what we can do with vehicles now is we can get the paint right, which takes multiple days, <laughs> just, multiple to, days. just to polish the defects out properly and safely, leaving maximum clear coat on the truck, not just unnecessary steps that are just ripping life off the clear coat, but polish it right and methodically using smaller tools on these little areas. Um, then we can protect it with ceramic coating. Mm -hmm. So all these hours we've spent polishing, we can protect them now with durable ceramic protection that I don't know the exact year, but you know, we didn't have this stuff 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, we, you know, you do all this polishing, and then at best you could put on a good paint sealant. You know, at most you're going to get a few months out of that. So now we can actually put a hard, sacrificial barrier on top of the polished out clear coat mm -hmm. that acts as a shield from the abuse that happens yeah. when you wash and when the sun hits it and all that. So does that kind of make sense? Oh yeah, it, it, and it's sense. it's not a shield that's invincible. No. <laughs> okay. Despite what you guys have seen probably online, you can't light it on fire and freaking hit it with things. I mean, you can if, if you want to be neglectful, but yeah. <laughs> you know what? You can still damage it. Yeah. So that's why we're so intentional about educating people after we detail their cars so they don't leave here and just trash your investment and your hard-earned money. So we know what it's like to work hard, and we don't want to take advantage of your hard work. So Absolutely. you come here and spend money. I want you to leave here and know how to wash this truck properly because all swirls and defects and stuff like that are typically self-inflicted. Yep. Simply from improper methods. Let me give you a quick one. Scrubbing down here with a mitt, you pick up all that road grind, you bring that same mitt right in here. And then you wonder, I don't know how I'm getting these swirls. Yeah. Okay? Well, that's you basically have a life form of sandpaper in your hand yeah, now exactly. from all the grit down here. 
So we teach, hey, we're going to watch this session with one minute, yep. and we're going to watch from here up. We have that on our website. Under our product charts, there is a proper washing method chart. You can print out, you can laminate it, you can put it in your garage, you can share it with your friends. Yeah, even and better yet, grab, buy some of the mitts because it comes with it. Yeah. And it actually will break it down where, exactly as you said, the panels of, and that's something that I kind of had a rough idea, I knew, I knew somewhat, yeah. but I didn't take that much attention to detail mm -hmm. when I was doing it. Because a lot of times it's like, taught out, people usually pick the middle of the day to wash their vehicle because they've been sitting around all morning like, oh, I'm gonna go wash my vehicle. And then it's super hot and you're just trying to get it done, dry it off before water spots yeah. happen. And that is the drying aspect, even the washing aspect is, is huge in understanding of like, okay, I need this amount of mitts to clean this vehicle. This side, the one side of the mitt does this portion of the vehicle, another mm -hmm. side does this portion of the vehicle. Understanding how to appropriately, it's appropriately section it off so you're not damaging and creating those swirl marks. Yeah. Which actually can happen, one of the biggest things that I've turned away from was going through one of those quick washes <laughs> with the spinning little uh, turbines that uh, people go through all day. That have debris from 5,000 other cars on the same. Yeah. yeah or going to the self-serve yeah. and you got the brush yeah. and you're like, oh, there's foam, it must be protecting the paint. Not gonna lie, I use the self-serve brush on this. Uh, you know what, a lot but, of people do, yeah. it's one thing, it's they don't know any better. And you know what? Some people look at what we're doing, it's like, man, that's way too much. It's just a truck or whatever. You know what? It's not for everybody, but the people that care, they're going to lock in to what we're trying to do here and how we're trying to educate. Well, a lot of your customers, to, even to, to speak of on, on owning trucks, a lot of them do use and abuse their trucks. You personally have yeah. a really sick Raptor, a really sick full-size uh, 20, it's or my wife hers. <laughs> your, yeah, your wife has a Raptor. Uh, it's like legitimately hers. I know it's funny. It's uh, you guys actually use yeah, vehicles. Use, yeah. So people who think of like, oh, I'm just going to go destroy it out on a weekend warrior trip. Well, there's ways that you, yeah, you can still do that and still maintain your. Yeah. And maintain you can still keep your paint protected, and it just makes it clean up easier. Mm -hmm. um, if you do get some defects in it there could potentially partially be in the coating layer, so you're not taking off as much clear coat to repair that. You know, it's, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because we do, we do use, we do use our stuff. You yeah. Know? And then we come back and we clean it up and it cleans up much easier. So another cool aspect of ceramic coating, you kind of touched on it, but it's just the ease of cleaning. Mm -hmm. So the best way to explain it to you guys is if you could picture like a Teflon frying pan, yeah. You cook an egg in it, you freaking wipe it out with a paper towel mm -hmm. because nothing wants to stick. That's another cool aspect what Cody is doing to your paint. Yeah. It's making it very low surface tension, nothing really wants to stick to it, it's very slippery. So when you do go to wash it, instead of having to do a bunch of hard scrubbing, most of the debris is going to come off of just your initial power wash. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, yeah. so everything just flies off the car, it's very hydrophobic, meaning the water's gonna beat up really tight. And what what I really like about ceramic coating is the, is the vehicle stays glossy consistent. We all want that like fresh, polished, wet paint look. It delivers that. Yeah. Right? Look at my Denali. I've had, I beadlocked it's it. Black it's, it's black too. It's black. It's Raptor. Raptor's black it's too. It's black. I coated it eight months ago, right when I first got it. It looks better than I took it off the lot. Yeah. And every time I wash it, instead of taking away from shine, which is what happens with wax, like every time you soak something down, you're taking gloss away mm -hmm. from like a traditional carnivore wax, yeah. you know, or a sealant. Yeah. Where coating, it's not phased by it because it's it's a hard layer now that's on top of your clear. Yeah. You can almost picture it as like a very thin sacrificial clear coat. Yeah. And it, it stays very glossy. So. That's another thing I like about it because it provides the look we all want too. Absolutely. You know? so. Absolutely. So with this specific truck, we did we ceramic treated the body, we did the glass, we did the suspension, which is a we did the Carly pin top. It's like three and a quarter width height. It actually feels like it's way bigger than it is. Uh, and then we also did the wheels, um, the innovate wheels. Um, with that, you're essentially adding the same protection to every asset as something that's going to get attached to road grime. One of the things I can't stand, especially about glass, is getting those water spots, which at some point, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it gets harder and harder to get those away depending on how bad the water is or how long it's been sitting. Yeah. And every time you spray your windshield, you start seeing the water spots pop back up. Um, so with that, what's the premise on, in, in, on 
in your personal opinion, and doing all of those steps on a vehicle um, for someone who's going to ask? Um, you know, break that down. I try to be as simple as possible. Yeah. I don't like to confuse people. Um, so let's start with the glass, okay? So we put on a product for the glass called Glass Parency. It's an outside company that we use. It's a two-part ceramic coating for the glass. Comes with a nice warranty program, a booster product they ship out to you. It's just a great program, so we chose to not make our own version. You know, if it's boot, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. In fact, it's a great product. We've used it for a couple years now. Um, so that said, that is on Travis's glass right here. Now, can it still get water spotter? Yeah, it's kind of like putting on sunscreen, go out lay at the beach for two days straight, and then get mad because you got sunburn. Well, yeah. you know what? You still gotta have some maintenance. <laughs> so you still gotta like a reapply. I'm and one of those guys. I get burned all the time. time. It's something that we're not talking about enough in our industry. Is maintenance. Everything's about maintenance. Everything is these big blown up claims. So this is gonna last, and we're not talking about the maintenance. So, how does the maintenance work on the glass? Well, man, if you got some. Uh, sprinklers, you're close to a sprinkler and hit the glass, we're not just going to be like, oh, no worries, it's coated, it's not going to water spot. Hey, <laughs> when hard water makes contact with sun, it can really do some damage, even a ceramic coating. I mean, that's, and it can cause what's, what's called etching. So, that said, we want to always keep something handy like our EcoShine waterless wash. You have it in the door panel on your truck, you notice something get hits real quick by sprinklers or or uh, let's say you went through like a light rain, hey, just get out, light your glass down, don't let that stuff sit on there and bake in the hot sun, which then can cause etching. Mm -hmm. So once again, it's just all about maintenance. So uh, on the paint, same thing. Even though it's ceramic coated, if you do get caught you know, in the rain, don't just leave your truck with water spots on it from the rain for a week. It's like you wanna wash it as soon as possible and Make sure you're maintaining that ceramic coating there because, once again, back to what I said a minute ago, you can still damage it. You can still put defects in it from improper washing and it can still get water spotted. Yeah. You know, so I actually think your maintenance increases when you do something like this, but it's easy maintenance. Yes. If that makes sense. Yes. It's, not, it's not hard maintenance. You're just going to be more intentional because now you have. A, a tangible investment, you got the money investment, that's obvious, yeah. but now you have a tangible investment, man, and as time goes by, Travis, it's just something, you already know this, you just appreciate what you're spending money on every month. Exactly. You walk out, you look at your truck, or even when it gets dirty, you wash it, man, it looks like when you left here, it's enjoyable. Yeah, and that's yeah. actually true, the point of having EcoShine, I, in my Raptor, I have EcoShine on my door, I obviously will get it in this truck, but it's uh, it's in my house. But Eco Shine was in my door with multiple microfiber towels. You know, it's always right here, easy to access. And now I'm to the point where I'm carrying all the products that I wash the vehicle with to every state. I'm because I bounce around in different states. I have a whole line that I'm taking with me in a bucket everywhere I go <laughs> because I want to make sure that wherever I'm at, I can properly maintain. He's getting addicted. <laughs> <That's a lot. laughs> um, but tell me it's not like therapeutic too. No, it no, is. It is. Well, especially when you understand the process. That's totally. the biggest thing. Is you, it used to be a hassle because you don't really understand the process. You're just washing it to wash it. Whereas now you're understanding that what you're doing is effect, effectively protecting the investment you already put into yeah. it. And also having your paint withstand the abuse that you're throwing at it. Yeah. Um, Let me make a couple more comments. We'll yeah. like on the wheels, the yeah, B-Lock wheel, like our B-Lock wheel coating on these Innovates right here. I don't know if we can see them. Yeah. But come on over. Oh, all right. So Travis got the camera now. We're just going to make a couple comments on how we protected these Innovates. Um, in my opinion, probably one of the best wheels on the market right here. This is a raw metal surface. So this is a wheel that you want to avoid using like traditional cleaners on. Mm -hmm. So getting our beadlock wheel coating on the surface to get it protected, what it's gonna do is, Travis, you're now gonna be able to maintain these with simply soap and water. Get back from a trip, power wash all the loose debris, have a little bucket of our shine soap made up, soap them down, maybe use some of our wheel wool brushes. Brushes. <laughs> brushes. Brushes. <laughs> brushes. Okay. brushes. Yeah, no, it's good, it. yeah. So use the brushes on all the little tight areas, they're a soft brush, and you know what? Done. Yep. A little boost of our Punch of Synergy spray maybe at the end. So it's basically eliminating the needs, the need of harsh cleaners, which can quickly 
damage a wheel like this, especially this anodized ring on here. Um, so. Well, that's also, once again, you're protecting your investment because those are those wheels, yes, they are the best, but they're also, they come with a price tag yeah. and you want to protect them. Okay, another comment, if you guys are like, well, what would I clean the tires with then if I have, you know, an anodized or just a raw metal surface? On these tires, you want to clean it with something like our solution, multi-purpose cleaner. We have that in a ready-to-use formula. It's basically equivalent to a dilution of four to one of the gallon concentrate that we have. Mm -hmm. And that is a lower pH cleaner that cleans by emulsifying. So the higher pH, the more uh, capability that product has to stain stuff. Mm -hmm. So de typical like tire degreasers and stuff like that, they're a higher pH. They come in contact with a sanitized ring, done. Well, that's why you see a lot they're of the guys. Oh yeah, you'll see a lot of the guys, whether it's on methods and it's no fault to the wheel company, yeah. but they're using these cleaners that you'll actually see, it looks like dried up water spots, but really what it did is it took the shine off the yeah. wheel and damaged it. Yeah. And that's, and actually one of the cool, I hate tire shine. I think tire shine like really glossy, but your guys' is, is not, I know. <laughs> it looks good. That, and that's, it's, it's honestly an A through Z process of understanding how you're going to treat mm -hmm. and how you're gonna use the products. And that also goes to show your guys' time and effort yeah. and the products that you're selling because You'll actually go out and test these products on your own personal vehicles to see what will happen with them, and then engineering it so it's actually yeah. it it is hey, it can be used use by everyone. What we sell. Exactly. We use what we sell, and look, on the tire shine. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this tire, this has got de our decked out tire dressing on it, diluted two to one. But what we do different is we'll spray it on the tire. You know, make sure any little light overspray we get on the wheel we wipe off immediately. But it's no big deal. It's a water based dressing. We'll spray it on the tire. We allow it to soak into the rubber. And then we come back with what we call a tatty towel. It's just kind of a junk microfiber. And we level it out so that you're not driving around with greasy tires that just attract a bunch of And tires. spitting stuff all so over the side of your vehicle. Very basic stuff. It's not like we're the only people that do that. But that's, once again, just a proper method. Well, attention to detail too. Yes, yeah, so you leave here. Your tire stays nice and black. Because if you don't ever put any kind of uh, dressing or conditioner on your tires, they're gonna start to turn brown, which is called tire blooming. Mm. And it just, to me, it looks, it does not look good. See, something, nice, shiny I, I just learned something. And then your tires start to just get brown and they just look nasty. So um, that's how we like to dress tires. And we've been successful in converting tire dressing haters to a dress tire when done like that. Converted. Yeah, um, run this through the dirt and you're not gonna get out and have it all framed up now on the tire. Yep. But it still stays nice and black, looking new. And then we did uh, we did the suspension too. So we did, we threw some, or I shouldn't yeah, say, should. you guys did, <laughs> uh, threw some beadlock yeah. ceramic on the suspension as well. More yeah. like the shock bodies to make it, is it more, would you say it's just f f ease of cleaning or is it also, it does help with the, Corrosion that sometimes can happen with these shafts on the shocks. Both, but okay. once again, I mean, depending on the conditions, we're not going to sit here and act like some over-exaggerated claim, like, oh, they're never going to corrode. Yeah. It's, never, it's like, hey, man, you live in a place where it, uh, in the winter it snows and they salt the roads, uh, and it gets on there and stays on there. <laughs> it's going to eat through the coating. Yeah. So, but what it does do mainly is ease of cleaning. Got it. Very easy to clean. So once again, you don't have to get in there spray like degreasers and stuff, which quickly stain mm -hmm. these shock bodies, as everybody knows. So you can get on there, power wash it, it's usually gonna be nice and clean just after a water rinse. So our B-lock wheel coating that we use on the wheels is what's also used on the suspension. Um, some of these components, that coating will actually self-level, meaning you don't even have to go back with a towel and wipe it off. So really leaves a nice thick layer. So the B-lock wheel coating for the wheels and suspension, and then Beadlock Pro, two coats is what went on the paint. Got it. It's two different products. Got it. So let's, uh, glass oh, and then glass parency. Yeah. yeah, actually, I think I just got some in the mail from them. So why don't you show them a nice down the side with that LED light coming in. So normally, and just so for those who don't know what they're looking at, normally what happens when you throw an LED lighting in is you're going to start seeing the imperfections and the swirl marks, <coughs> excuse me, that I've actually from the factory you're gonna get, cause they get to the lot, they wash the vehicles on the lot with not yeah, much first. care. Yeah. yeah. And you'll get to, you'll have swirl marks literally the day you buy this vehicle. 
So you'll see that there is nothing. Yeah, see, look at the reflection of the light. Nothing. And some of the some of the watchers might think, well, why couldn't we just, you know, if we don't care about the squirrels, why can't we just throw a coating, and, you know, just decontaminate the paint and just put some ceramic on it without polishing it out? Because the ceramic coating really wants to bond to a nice leveled surface, and that's what happens when we come through and do a light compound and a polish. We create a really nice smooth surface on a microscopic level so that ceramic coating can properly bond. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for you guys to understand if you are shopping for a ceramic coating. It's, funny it's like that... with anything, <laughs> you know, there's deals out there. Oh, I'll do it for this. I'll do it for that. The main question you should be asking is, hey, what's your prep? What are you doing before you apply the coating? Mm -hmm. Or are you applying a professional coating or is it something just out of a large spray bottle called a coating. You know, there's a difference. Yeah, it's absolutely. Like the difference between a spray wax, like we've had for years, or a Carnuba paste wax, mm -hmm. right? There's yep. gonna be higher content of the wax in the paste than the spray. It's the same with coatings. We have coating sprays, and then we have professional coatings that are a higher concentration of the coating, leading to greater protection. Which is the end all be all is what Straight we're trying up. to do. So if we work our way to the back, it's so crazy. I ended up, yeah, you're fine. So I got a little nick somewhere. Any paint correction guys, let me know. So now moving to the back, um, what was super interesting is when I bought this truck, uh, even with the price tag, there was no bed liner. So I ran, I was up in Washington at the time, went and got it line X'd. Um, but one of the things that happens with line X is that it's in the sun all day long. And what it, you'll start to see is it goes from a black to more of a grayish, lightish, kind of weird Not color. Gray, yeah. But yeah. So what is something that you guys do to help treat the, oh, you found, was that in the bed? I missed that. Or, Which one? I, that one was like missing for like, I don't know how long. I guess it was somewhere back here in the yeah, mess like, that I have. Squirrel. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> what is something that you guys do with those that have, whether, whether they use like Raptor liner or Linex or whatever you want to call it, what is the process to how you guys treat the, this bed? Yeah, regardless of the brand, the way we treat it is first, we have to clean it, so mm -hmm. back to the prep. So we have to clean the bed. We do that with solution, multi-purpose cleaner, diluted four to one, back to what we were talking about on the tires. So that same exact product, our solution multi-purpose cleaner. So we get in there and spray it down with that. We scrub it with a brush and then we power wash it out. So then we have a clean surface to treat. We allow that to dry for a few minutes, depending on how hot it is outside. And then we start at the front and take our clutch silica spray. Start once again at the front, mist it, getting nice even coverage, work our way back, allow that to soak in and then get in with like a sponge applicator and just even out any high spots we see from the clutch. And this is what it looks like. Yeah, one of the things that I love about this is that yeah. it's not greasy. Yeah. And especially when you're like, you're loading bikes is that things start to slide around. So I love that you brought that up because I mean, I was one of those ones that did it back when I was mobile and I didn't have a product like this. We would have to, we just put some dressing on it mm -hmm. and it looked good to you wash it again. Yep. And then it all come out. And then like you said, it attracts dust. It makes it sticky. Um, clutch doesn't do that. And let me just give another plug for clutch. Yeah, do it. <laughs> uh, you got a UTV with plastics, black plastic, painted plastic, dirt bike. The typical thing would be to use something in a little can. Yeah. I'm not going to mention names because I'm just not like that. Yeah. Right. But it just makes it look glossy, but it's sticky and greasy. Replace that with clutch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On your dirt bikes, UTV, clutch is magical for all that black plastic or once again, the stickers, painted plastic. We have a razor, whole exterior gets treated with clutch. It literally looks brand new. You take it out to the desert, um, not everything's sticking to it. Another thing is what, what happens with dressing in the past, you know, you dress something like this or uh, put dressing on your UTV, you know, the black plastics, it starts to fade it more over time. You know, it starts to almost really make it get white. Yeah, know? it gives it a white yeah. little haze so, to it, yeah. Uh, clutch doesn't do that. Clutch is soaking into the bed liner, rejuvenating it, you know? And I'm sure everyone's wondering, well, how long does it last? Uh, number one thing is that's gonna be dependent on how much water contact. So if you put it on the winter, it's raining a lot, it's gonna, you know, you might get a couple months out of it. Uh, during the summer where you'd see less rain, 
you could get upwards of three, four months. Mm. So pretty cool. Uh, you'd use, we use about eight ounces. So clutch comes in gallons or 16 ounces. So if you were to get a thing of clutch, you'd use about eight ounces, which is um, 15 bucks retail for eight ounces. So the bottle's 30, but if you use half, 15 bucks. So, you know, you spend 500 bucks right on a bed liner. You can rejuvenate for a few months for 15 bucks. I'm all over done. It, right? Absolutely. So. And actually made a good point when you're talking about other things outside. And I think we did it at the beginning of the video. You actually do have products that are more specific to certain niches, whether that's in the marine aspect or that is in the motorcycle aspect. I mean, you guys have your own cleaning solution for guys who ride dirt bikes. You have your own cleaning and ceramic treatment for those who own boats. Um, so is that you diving into those markets? Obviously there's a passion for detailing and providing a quality, not just service, but product. Is that also because it's a passion in your personal life that yeah, you guys like to go out and enjoy that? I love, you know, I think we're probably like a lot of your viewers, Travis. I know that we're cut from the same thread. We like to be outdoors. I've took my kids camping since actually they couldn't even walk. I mean, my son that works here, Colby, we're taking him out when he's in a pack and play, you know, in diapers. So, um, We've done that. My son, he actually raced dirt, back, dirt bikes for a while. Mm -hmm. Every Thanksgiving, every New Year's, you find us in the desert. Yep. So that's that's just what we do. So it's just a natural progression to move into having stuff to, you know, clean up our stuff when we get back. But one thing that we've done here is that instead of having a bunch of different products, um, and there's a bunch of crossover, you know, maybe instead we we try to have something that will do multiple things. Mm -hmm. So like. Clutch, for example, it conditions a bed liner. Mm -hmm. it, can, you, it can be used as a booster for ceramic coating, but then you could also use it on your dirt bike plastics. Yep. So instead of like remarketing things and just saying, you know, taking the same thing, putting it in a different bottle, different label, it's like, no, hey, just use this for multiple purposes. Yep. You know? So Absolutely. I think by doing that, we build trust with our consumers. You know, like we're not just trying to make skews here. Mm -hmm. We're not just trying to, Hey, let's just make more products and generate more money. Hey, you know, we're always going to make money if people trust us. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, right? and, so, and not many co companies have yeah, that these people days. People trust you when you say, Hey, you know what? You don't need to buy all those things, buy this one thing and use it for four different reasons. So. Absolutely. And that is, that is honest to God truth. Um, so for those that are interested in say getting their vehicle, uh, ceramic treated, or even just getting a level, like a certain detail for their vehicle, what's the mm -hmm. best way for them to understand what they're getting in each package and then also scheduling, finding you guys, yeah, that kind of stuff. So the easiest way is we have a website, stevensdetailing.com. It's got a nice menu on it. I've written it out to try to be as simple as possible. Instead of a lot of wording, there's bullet points, they're actually checkpoints, but it says what each package consists of. Try to make it real streamlined. Um, we also have an area on the website called frequently asked questions. So we try to answer a couple of the most popular questions that would come up. Number one being, which, which, which level should I get? Mm -hmm. um, so we have a breakdown on the website on, hey, level one, this is why you get that. Level three, this is why you get that. We don't try to push anybody into any type of service. It's all about what fits your budget and what fits uh, like your lifestyle. Like, hey, I'm not gonna be as thorough on my vehicle. I'm not really interested in that level three but I still want to have some solid protection and get a quality detail that I can trust what the process was. So stevensdetailing.com is very informative for that. Um, there's a contact number on there. You can also call and ask questions. Our manager, Corinne's awesome to answer any questions on that. Um, She's been a lifesaver. <laughs> yeah, same here. Yeah. <laughs> so it was nice after, I think, 22 years to have somebody help answer that phone. Oh, I can't imagine, yeah, especially so. with me calling so many times. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and lastly, yeah. on Stevens Detailing, our Instagram, shinesupply.com, typically what you're gonna find me talking about in our stories is actual detailing. Not necessarily, hey, buy this or do this. It's like, hey, I'm doing this right now, and you can see the results. So back to my initial conversation, it's like, I just wanna show it. So. Follow our Instagram, The Shine Supply. That's a great way to have a window into how we do things here. And if you choose to use us, awesome. So, Cool. Well, uh, I'm gonna do a quick little B-roll of the truck, but Jeremy, as always, I really appreciate your time and always uh, being willing to teach me how to better take care of the products and also how to properly use your products. But also just, you know, everyone here is good human beings. And that's, as we get into such a crazy world we live in, 
it's it's refreshing to find those yeah. people. So I really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Honestly. Well, likewise to you, man. I mean, you're a paying customer. And yeah. You're coming in and doing this. And yeah. You don't have to do that. Th know? This is this isn't free. Yeah. I'm paying for this. But that's, there's a that's reason. What I appreciate yeah. it the most. You know, is is seriously, Travis is a paying customer, and the fact that you just came in this morning, this was on the fly. Travis is like, hey, man, I want to do a video. Um, you don't find that anymore because she's like, hey, I'm going to do a video. Once you knock this money off, it's it's a. Uh, it all, what goes around comes around. Uh, exactly. Do that, Support so. good people. That's what it's all about. We appreciate you, man. So cool. All right, guys. Well, that is it for this video. Once again, Shine Supply. <laughs> Jeremy, I mean, what this truck looks like. It looks better than this mustache. I guess it's uneven a little bit, but whatever. I like it. Yeah, it's nice, right? Yeah, bring, you the bring, 80s it, back. bring it down a little bit. Bring it like yeah. further down? Yeah, it is very fine. I should, like handlebar yeah. style? Yeah. I was thinking about mullet. That's what we should do next. Mullet. All right, guys, let's dive into it.